In a special committee of the whole meeting last week, councillors got together to review the current road strategy for the Clarence Rockland municipality. You can watch this whole meeting on our YouTube channel and welcome to Summary Report Episode 2 for the brief notes. With research being facilitated by consultant Andy Whitaker from Jacobs, each councillor was spoken to individually prior to the meeting to assess what they thought were the most important changes required to keep developing the local road network and five key themes were identified and used as focal points for the evening's conversations. Currently, the city of Clarence Rockland invests approximately $2.7 million per year into the road network. But according to Mr. Whitaker, with the condition they're in, you would need to bump that up to $6 million per year to catch up with all the work that's required across the whole network. The current strategy prioritizes resurfacing roads before they become too damaged, especially those with a higher traffic volume. This, however, does mean that some roads do get deferred, sometimes for as long as 30 years as was pointed out by Councillor Levert. So but let's not waste any more time and get through the themes. The first theme of the evening was looking into the city's baseline plan, which is used to help identify the areas of priority. Councillors were asked throughout the evening if they agree or not with what was being presented and the systems that are currently in place. There was a strong agreement that due to the lack of available funding, a baseline plan is vital, but there was a general consensus that it could be improved and Councillor Don Bouchard had an idea of how. Don. Uh, so the, the issue that I have is just that it seems that we would need to have two separate programs. Like, so the ongoing program that we have right now, the baseline plan, but there needs to be another plan for what I'm calling the dead roads, okay? So the roads that are so beyond repair that would cost way too much to even look at. So when we're looking at Shmeganyi, when we're looking at multi and you get on multi and you're like, wow, where's the asphalt here? I mean, and there's, there's, you know, it's beyond repair and it would be a high costly repair. And it's not a road that has a lot of population on it. And it's not a road that too many people pass on there, but it's still a nice road that goes to a nice golf course. And we're looking for economic development, bring people in, but by the criteria, it's not going to get done. So it's considered a dead road because it's just beyond repair. So what do we do about those roads? that are dead that would cost way too much money to redo because at some point you know and we're looking at Notre Dame right now where we're putting some money into that one there but we have a lot of those roads there so and we don't have the the, the capital uh investment to be able to fix those ones so what do we tell residents what's the long term with those things I mean at some point it's not like you know the road just eventually dies and we just close it and no one can go on it anymore well we have to do something about it so there needs to be some sort of a parallel program, some sort of a parallel fund to say, okay, so we have the one fund that's on the baseline plan that we want to upkeep the roads, making sure that they don't deteriorate too much. But we need to have something in mind for those dead roads that are just way beyond repair right now that are just way too expensive. And I understand, I don't want to have one road cost $2.3 million for one year, then I've got uh, $400,000 left for the rest of the budget. But there needs to be something for those types of roads though. The second theme of the night was regarding flexibility and the fact that most councillors found that the plan and the system in place was a little bit too rigid with the councillors unable to give as much input from the residents as they would perhaps want to. The theme suggested that there shouldn't be any ward that goes too long without having some kind of road project. This theme did create a little bit of a divide in opinions as some councillors didn't support the idea of dividing the plan between wards and there was a cry for unity and to look at the municipality as a whole, as a collective. However, some suggested that there should be a difference between rural and urban, but that again creates a divide, as councillors explained. Uh, I think it's just to recognize the needs and if we come by, we're just throwing ideas and, and like with Don's suggestion on the past theme, uh, then you might decide to invest large amounts for dead roads that are in rural and do some resurfacing instead in, in, in uh, more urban roads. It just, I think it gives us uh, a good recognition doing a kilometer in urban versus a kilometer in rural. I think there's a difference in cost if you need to replace the infrastructure under. So I think I, 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 I don't, I don't want to make it seem as, as a divide, but clearly as Rebuilding Notre Dame and rebuilding a rural road, there's there's a lot of money difference involved. And I want to make sure the rural gets there a fair share as well. So I, I don't know if that makes it better. 
Monsieur Lalonde. It's it's the it's all in the world in the world flexibility because uh, Councillor uh, Guillemot brings a good point. You know a. A, a road in rural to be reconstructed or to be resurfaced versus in urban is probably uh, is different. But it can still be more costly in rural because you probably have a much longer road to do at this for the between two other roads. While in in the urban core, you may have a uh, more expensive road to do per meter of road because you have infrastructure to change beneath, but it's a much shorter distance to cover. So the cost can be. So I think if you go by uh, the criteria of, of the road per se, and the flexibility comes in to say, okay, well, we, de we definitely need to change the infrastructure, like the sewers are, are leaking or whatever, the water main is done, we need to do it. Then the flexibility comes in that, while well, you do this road in the urban core sooner than it was projected in the plan because something else happened underneath. So I think that's where the flexibility comes in. We have a high percentage of, of rural road and every ward has urban and rural roads. And the point I think what's important is again, we have to take into consideration where we want the development to go. And sometimes, you know, when, when you have a road, there are maybe uh, seven houses when there could be 20. Well, I mean, we should encourage those roads and so that there's more development because a developer cannot, will not build in, do in, infilling and, but when we want to do infilling close to the village, close to Rockland, to the urban area, I think it's important to, uh, to take into consideration that factor. Hey, anybody that's else? why we all should be separate. Well, it should right. be taken into consideration, I mean. Uh, opinion, Monsieur le Maire. Oui. Um, so for raising, I, I kind of agree with a separate, but it's not the separating them completely. Like you said, yeah. recognizing the difference needs, like raising the, the the gravel in on the rural roads, stuff like that is a separate budget, but should still be on the plan itself. Also, same thing as ditching, as and all and all those things too, because in the urban area you barely have like ditches the way that we do, and ours have been haven't been cleaned for years and there is irrigation problems and all that because of that. So I think ditching and raising the gravel roads, like not only the resurfacing part, but the the gravel roads, a big portion of our uh, rural roads too. The third theme surrounded communication with all councillors agreeing that the way in which things are explained to residents is vital in easing public opinion and frustration surrounding the upcoming plans. And with the idea of a summary sheet containing the Coles notes being suggested. Councillor Chouanier spoke of the rural residents' frustration that they often pay as much if not more in taxes but their roads aren't being maintained in the same way as those living in perhaps the more urban areas of the Clarence Rockland municipality. But other councillors were quick to jump at this point and point out that taxes are for the whole municipality and you have to inform them of where their money is going. Yeah, I think uh, communication is not bad, but we, I think communication and education go together. Uh, like Madame Chouanier was saying, I, I get these comments too, uh, people saying, well, all I got is garbage. Well, you've got to tell them, well, you just, you've got your road plowed in the winter, you've got your ambulance, you've got your fire. Uh, you got your social programs. You've got to educate people all the way because then they'll, they'll tell you all. Oh, I, you know, I don't use. I, I don't have any kid that's cool. I don't use this. I don't. Yeah, but they all go together. Information and education. I think they all go together. Mr. Zan, I think it's important for residents to to understand that. Um, uh, you know, their road, they pay taxes for the entire road network, not just for the road that they're on. It's not just, the, it's about how they get to the grocery store, how they get to work, how they get everywhere. Um, my issue with uh, communication sometimes is that um, I feel, or we're even um, aware that the communication comes out. And so, um, and just to be able to, like everybody else said, to just get back to our residents. I, I do have a lot of questions sometimes from people and, and I go, well, it's on the plan. I go, well, how did they make it on the plan? I'm like, well, it's, I don't know, it's, it's categorized. And they go, well, how is it categorized? What's your criteria, right? And so at, at that point, 
you know, I, I just at that point I say, well, you're going to have to call City Hall because <laughs> I'm like, they've they've got the plan. And I I don't know. So, um, but yeah, I I definitely think that council should be much more aware. Uh, which obviously this is what this is for. So I applaud this process, and I'm happy that this is going the way it is. Was I really talking like R two D two again? A little bit. The next theme, the fourth one, focused around the 99 kilometres of gravel roads within the municipality. Councillors debated a little over what should be done with gravel roads, as some felt they needed to be left and not upgraded as we just simply don't have the money. And others felt like these upgrades were necessary for progress. But one thing they all agreed upon was maintaining a higher standard for all the gravel roads we do have. Like, uh, uh, first of all, like Christian said, uh, I don't agree that if if you bought a property on gravel road, it should stay a gravel road. Things have evolved. Some a lot of houses have, have been planted there on that road, and I I don't know if if what seems to what is the the, the main what is the the criteria to for the pay, for the gravel road? Do we know what the criteria is for a gravel road? It, it doesn't seem because one gravel is not the same. One gravel road is not the same as the other, so uh, I don't know what our, our standards are. Does anybody know what the standards are for gravel roads in Clarence Rockland? I understand, but the, the reason why we're doing this right now is because we can't even take care of a road network that we have. Yeah. So now we want to enhance other areas while we can't even like maintain. We're, we're, we're killing off roads that are costing us tons of money because we've neglected them for so long. And I'm not blaming council or, or, you know, this is something that's been happening throughout the years. All right. This is not something that just happened during our term, the term prior. This is an issue that's been going on for years. So yeah, but, how can we, but yeah. so, so until we can uh, uh, maintain what we have, it's really hard to justify, uh, 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 you know, enhancing another, 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 another road. It, it, it's it's that this is the this is why we're here right now, and without having that added investment that is needed to take care of everyone, like we wish we could, uh, but we just can't. Like so, you know, we have to we have to we have to make sure that we take care of of, of that network. Monsieur Simon, Monsieur la Monsieur, I'm not Laval. saying. I'm not saying that uh, let's never do the gravel roads and, and, and upgrade it. I'm saying right now, with the budget we have now, we can upgrade it. It's irresponsible of us if we do. So, and same thing with saying that we're not using the right type of rocks. Well, we're not road designers. That's not our job to decide what goes there. That's They tell us what we're going to put on, we're going to put it on. It's the mainness. Raising it is what we need, really. The difference between a good one and a bad one, when we're in dirt, because there's not enough rocks. Put more rocks so it raises it above and then it can drain properly. I think a lot of the complaints we, we typically get in the rural setting with gravel roads is because we haven't invested enough in them to maintain them. So, to what to, to, to Councillor Simal's point, that's exactly it. Invest the right amount of money that you should for those types of road, and the complaints will, they won't stop, but at least they'll be, they'll be diminished. Uh, I didn't mean that we wanted to, that I wanted to pave the roads. Uh, that's not what I meant. I meant maintaining at least the gravel roads. That's what I meant. Okay, Sam. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sam. Madame Joanne. Well, one thing I care. What about um, if people already have a, a, a asphalt road when it needs to be repaired or upgraded or redone, then there would be local uh, local improvement fees. And then, so the first time that the asphalt is put in on the road, it's put on a road, as either the asphalt or the surfacing, hard surfacing, either either one, when it's put, put in for the first time, the city pays for it. Every time that it needs to be upgraded or it needs to be redone or fixed and everything, then it goes to local improvement. Then it would be fair because the people who, you say, yeah, people bought their house and it, 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 there was an asphalt. Yeah, but somebody else paid for it, you know? So they don't have ever to pay for it. We, we, and then we ask the, the people who are in gravel, well, now, hey, it's either you pay for it or you, you don't have it. 
You know, it's it's this is where it's not it's not fair. Madame Joanna, so, Monsieur Simon said we don't have the money for it. And, and I don't know we, what we upgrades the are happening in the asphalt, urban area. Yeah, don't forget, we also have a, happening. a certain amount of debt that we can only have. So you can't pass that debt. If you put a debt too high, then we're stuck everywhere else. And finally, the last theme, the councillors were asked to discuss where they could find a further injection of money to help increase the quality of local roads. And it comes as a surprise to no one that that is in the form of the taxpayer. There was support amongst the councillors for a further increase, but they wanted to see a breakdown of the numbers. How much and for how long would it take to make a real dent into these upcoming projects? Um, so the 1% a year to close the gap just marginally. Obviously, if something bigger comes along that we're unaware of, that will make the gap bigger. Um, I believe Mr. Darch made a presentation to you a number of years ago identifying at that time the gap was about four million dollars. Um, we will be looking re looking at the gap as part of this process so that you will have that number presented to you and what will be required to um, close the gap. So the, it's really important to maintain that one percent increase to the road reserve. We've given it up a couple of times in previous years to meet a budget uh, percentage increase. Um, and when we present that uh, increase to the road reserve in the budget process, it's kind of a little asterisk there that this is related back to that actual roads bylaw. And um, certainly the bylaw is very specific that the money in the roads reserve, and it's one of the few road well, no, all the reserves have bylaws now. Um, <clears throat> but should we need funds out of the road reserve, we have to come back to council. And I believe there's only once, as long as I've been saying, that we came back to council to, to make an exception. Um, but uh, for the most part, for moving forward, we've always used the money in the road reserve for the roads. It's maintaining that 1%. So last year, next year whatever the one because it, it's one percent of the tax rate right so last year it was 225 next year it's probably going to be 230 240 um so it will increase by itself um however giving it a boost will not hurt so the easiest way would be to amend that bylaw from one percent to 1.5 percent so we will be back to you with the number though uh, it still comes down to um, if we keep if we follow the plan as set forward and if we don't get into a problem where we have a road that collapses or a sewer that a line that decides to break on Nari or whatever else right that's well, falls upon us so having the asset management plan in place in theory correct me if i'm wrong julian uh we should not have surprises because we've done proper assessments and we should be able to move through and follow the plan. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely right, Helena. And we have reduced uh, the amount of um, emergencies that we've uh, seen in the past. Um, since the plan has been introduced, we, we haven't really encountered any of those. Uh, we, we had a lot of culverts to replace that had met their life expectancy and that we had some challenges and risk. And over the years, we, we've also addressed that. So, uh, it served us in, in, the, in the, those regards, uh, served us well. So that takes us to the end of the meeting. The takeaways were really that the plan definitely needs updating. Unsurprisingly, not all, all councillors saw eye to eye about how things should be done and divided, but that will make for a healthy progress going forward. A more comprehensive plan will be coming back to council for them to re-examine in the coming months. But don't expect the road strategy within the asset management plan to change too much this year. However, what will be coming back to the councillors before then will be a financial strategy to increase the local road conditions. So expect to see that reflected in the budget at the end of this year and in your taxes for 2022. Thank you for watching the second episode of Summary Report and we will see you soon. Goodbye.